Hello, having looked at for loops, we're now going to continue straight on and look at Python's second iteration construct, which is a while loop. Now we can look at while loops. So in comparison to for loops, which are count controlled iteration, also called definite iteration, while loops are condition controlled loops, also called indefinite iteration. So we can't, generally speaking, look at a while loop and know exactly how many times it's going to uh, loop is going to be determined by a condition, not by some counter. But generally speaking, we can also just convert for loops into while loops. Um, you, you, part of the trick is just knowing when to use which, um, and it will depend on whether you have a condition or not. Because we know with if statements, if we have we follow an if statement with a we have a condition in an if statement, we follow the if keyword with a condition. And if this is true, we're going to do something. If this is not true, we're not going to do that something. Same idea with a while loop. So we follow the keyword while with a condition. So if I do while true in this case and do a colon and print um, hello, we're going to get a scary thing because it's just going to keep looping infinitely. So we don't want infinite loops in programming. Infinite loops are not good because uh, they're going to cause issues at some point. Sadly, if I keep scrolling on my script mode, it's not go anywhere because it's just saying hello over and over and over again. If I clear this and try and cancel this or stop it up here because we don't want to uh, ruin Replit servers or my internet speed because infinite loops are not good because we clearly they're not going to be infinite. They're going to end at some point when your computer turns off or I just interrupted the uh, program there but they can cause runtime errors if memory overloads because maybe you've got a counter. Maybe you've got count equals zero which you are uh, initializing outside of a loop because that's a global variable and if I do count plus equals one here and make sure I print out count as well it's going to keep counting up and up and the numbers get bigger and bigger and it's going to have a big effect on your memory and so on so you can play around with it it's not going to cause any damage really but we don't want infinite loops so we've got to make sure we make this condition become false at some point if we ever want to stop the loop so indefinite doesn't mean infinite indefinite just means we don't know how many times it's going to loop uh, but it will stop at some point. So maybe if I change this true into a proper condition and do something like uh, while count uh, not equals 10. So uh, whenever count is not 10, it's going to loop in this case. But as soon as count does become 10, it's going to stop. So you can see it counts 1 to 10 because it became 10 and so stopped. This is doing the same thing as a for loop, right? I could have alternatively have done for i in range or yeah, it should do i because we've already got count. For i in range 0 through to 11, it's doing the exact same thing if I just print out count again. So that's what I mean about you can often just convert or rewrite a while loop as a for loop, except I've done that wrong. If I do for i, print i, um, you can generally just rewrite a for loop as a while loop. But the power of while loops comes when we're not really dealing with numbers necessarily. So maybe we have some user input. Let's maybe do an authentication, a basic authentication program. Authentication is making sure that someone is who they say they are. So the most common example of authentication is a password. I really like doing password examples for some reason. In reality, um, actually writing a password program is a lot harder because you can't just save passwords randomly. Um, so if we have maybe, we have set a password and we are getting the user to check to see if their password is is correct. So if we do maybe uh, a variable called guess, if they're trying to guess the password maybe, and then I'm doing input built-in function, and I do enter your password, like that. Now, I want to see if this password is correct or not correct. So if I do something like if guess equals equals password, and then um, that's fine. I could do print uh, your in, and then we can begin the rest of our program maybe. So this is what we've done before. We can also do else if we get the password wrong. Make sure I do that lowercase. If we get the password wrong, we can type wrong password. But the issue is with just selection on its own. While that's great, it works one time. If I do instead of A B C X Y Z, press enter. Wrong password. Program ends. That's that's it. That's not really useful. It's not really how it works, generally speaking. You know, if you get your password wrong, they give you at least a couple of tries to get it right. But let's say our program is generous and gives the user an infinite number of guesses. We of course can't we can't program an infinite number of guesses because we'd need an infinite number of if statements and inputs, and it would just become absolutely ridiculous. So instead we can just change this if into a while loop. 
So already we have a condition, while guess equals equals password, in this case, we want it to be not equals to password because every time they guess and it's not equal to our password, we're going to get them to guess again. So we now want to copy this input statement and we could just maybe slightly edit it and say, um, wrong, <laughs> try again maybe. Like that. And now we can um, try this and we want to get rid of else because else no longer, it doesn't exist on its own. And then afterwards we can, once we get it right, it's just going to skip this loop so we can print uh, correct and then we can begin our program. So if I run this, it should now work as we want it to. So it's going to keep asking once we get it wrong. So if I get it wrong on my first try, wrong try again, perfect. I can try again, again. I can try as many times as I want to. But as soon as I get it right, if I type in ABC, we should just get correct and we can move on and complete the program. Hopefully this example makes clear why while loops are called condition control loops or also indefinite iteration because we are really at the behest of our condition. Especially once we are having some user input involved, we don't know when we just look at our loop how many times this is going to execute. Whereas with a for loop, we do have some idea of how many times. We know it's going to execute for a definite number of times. With a while loop, it's more indefinite. We don't know for sure. In our case, if the user could have got this wrong a million times, they could have got it right first try. We don't actually know how many times it's going to loop until it actually happens. I just want to end by showing you a few more things which are not super common but still are worth knowing. I did say earlier we had, I think we had an else left over below this while from uh, something else and I got rid of it and I said you can't have else on, a, on your own, on its own, which you can't, you can't just have an else randomly in your program, it doesn't make any sense. But actually we can follow a, a while loop, also a for loop with an else statement. It's not only for if statements although it's vastly it's used most often for if statements. When we have else following a while loop, it executes once we have our condition being uh, broken. So once the condition becomes false, it will execute. So I could equally have put that print correct in an else statement. It doesn't really matter hugely. Uh, if I get it correct, it's now going to print correct twice because I have it both in else and also in my main body of my code. If we get rid of this and replace this with a for loop, just do a real quick one for i in range uh, 0 to 5, or we could just do 5 in that case, um, and let's just get rid of this input quickly. If I now just print i like we were doing in the last video, and if I add on an else statement after this, let's see what happens. If I print uh, finished, what happens when we have else after 4 is else will get executed, the body of else inside the indented block, uh, when the loop finishes. So if we run this, we'll get one to four and then finished. A keyword which is very rare but sounds like it's more useful than it is, is pass. So pass is reserved, so you can't call a variable pass. And what pass does is effectively nothing. It, it literally just passes. So this is quite useful as a placeholder. Maybe I couldn't really think what to write in this for loop. But if I try and run this, I'm going to get an error because it expects it says an indented block. I have actually got an indent here, but I've just got nothing, no code to run. So pass is good because it can kind of be a placeholder until you have code you actually want, because all it does is read pass and ignore it. So we go straight to finished in that case, even if it has already looped four times. If you prefer keywords which actually do something, we can use another one. So continue is used to, so if I maybe do something like if, uh, if maybe you really don't like for number two, we could say if i equals equals two, we're just going to continue and we're not going to print it out because if I now print uh, print i and run this code, what's going to happen is we're going to get zero, one, but not two. So it, it is, we are setting i to two at some point because we have it in this range, but we are just, as soon as we see i is two, we are continuing. And what continue does is skip to the end of this current loop. So it just goes straight back to the top and loops again. So anything below continue will get left out of that iteration. And finally, another keyword is break. So you can use break uh, to get out of a loop. If you really want an emergency exit, you can get out of it. Maybe you know, you've got an option to exit your program. You may have an option to exit and then you can use break. Um, so here I've, I've said when i is two, I'm going to break. So once we get to i being two, we end our loop and that's it. So break is quite 
and continuum as well. They're not brilliant to use, if I'm honest. I certainly rarely, rarely use them. Usually, you are using either break or continue when you have written a not particularly brilliant loop. You know, if your planning wasn't very good and you've got a really complex program, you may be forced to use something like break or continue. Pass is not really used unless you're just um, wanting a placeholder. But break and continue, I wouldn't recommend using. But if you really need to, they are there uh, to be used, I guess. For this try now, in question one, just have a look at this tiny bit of code I wrote. It's an example which unfortunately I see fairly often of badly written loop code. Try and figure out what are some of the issues with this. There are two, arguably three issues with this, I and mean, then how would you fix them to um, do what it's trying to do. And finally, question two is trying to program a classic problem, which is generating Fibonacci numbers, which add up the previous two numbers, starting with zero and one. So I pause the video and try these three parts, so two A, B, and C, just increasing it. Um, in doing question two, you can use both for loops and while loops. So have a go at it, and there'll be a sample solution in the description.